And that was right. the video of Judo Koye and Tunde Ed Not. Yeah. There's been a back and forth. And there, I think we should give a background yes, story. I think for people who don't know the whole story, let's give a background story to what exactly led to that video. Yes. Uh, so Cynthia Morgan, we all know Cynthia Morgan and love her music. And after a while, we didn't hear from Cynthia Morgan again. And everyone started to wonder what was going on. She lay low for a while until a few days ago when Cassandra, who is the former Miss, Miss Globe, and also has a show she calls Upfront with Sandra, where she sort of deals with depression. She had Cynthia Morgan up on her Instagram Live, and they had an interview. And Cynthia Morgan came all out to talk about everything that happened as regards this, talking about the fact that her name was withheld from her by her former management, Judo Koye, and that the fact that she could not even use her name to profit, she had no access to her Vivo account, no access to her social media accounts, and as such had to start all over again. Now, if we remember correctly, there was a time she came back and rebranded, tried to come out with the name Madrina, but it didn't seem to fly well. So now Judo Koye has come out with his own side of the story in his interview with Tunde Ednot. There's been back and forth, but we have Chidi Okereke, a digital entrepreneur, um, who is joining us to look at this. He's experienced life on both ends of the divide from the perspective of the social, of the artist as well as the record label. And today he'll be joining us to analyze what went wrong. Let's look at the Cynthia Morgan case study. Chidi, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, Elise. Thanks for having me. Hi. So Adam and I are going to be looking at this conversation with you, looking at, you know, what happened, what went wrong. Uh, I think we can first of all agree that there was a problem with the fact that the contract was not read and uh, properly read uh, and agreed to by both parties. So, I mean, that as of, as of yesterday, when, when the whole story broke, um, that's that what a lot of us thought until um, Jude came out with the fact that the contract wasn't even, it wasn't even in the right contract. And then um, Mr. Morgan's own manager also said, that um, she and Cynthia Morgan drafted the contract and gave it to Jude, and what Jude did was just look at it and then put his letter ahead, you know, to make it official and all that. So it's um, there's the, the, at the end of the day, there's a lot of things that were not being told. There's a whole lot of things that were not being told, and um, the only thing we can do is judge based on the information we have, and that information, to be honest, that information is not enough. What I know for sure is that. Young artists should ensure that they look at their, it is very important that they look at their contract. They find print, look at it very, 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 very well. Because at the end of the day, the average business wants to make as much money as possible. It's not charity. They want to make as much money as possible. So when you are seeing that they are trying to, you know, hold you down, lock you and all that, they just want to make money. They just want to recruit their investment and make money out of it. To you, you are, to them, you are an investment, not charity. So look at every contract, look at it by, look at the fine print, call a lawyer, lawyer relevant to that industry you're going into, beyond music, whatever it is, if it's your job, call a lawyer to look at it, and then, you know, um, come to an agreement that will favor you on the long run. Don't be excited that you're just about to get signed. Look at the fine print. Now, looking at uh, the, the, the current um, uh, reoccurrence of situations like this, we've had uh, a couple of artists who've had the same issue with their record labels back and forth. There was a run town situation. There was uh, a, 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 a um, Kiss Daniel. Kiss Daniel. There was um, Kiss Daniel, yeah. uh, Harry Song and Five Star. So is it that we've been hammering on this over and over again? Is it that the artists don't just seem to understand, or is it that some clauses in the contract can be hidden to them and they wouldn't know? Is it so? Whose fault is it really? Exactly. Who should? Who is, who to, is blame? to blame? It, it, it's a, it's a, it's a combination of everything. To be honest, now somebody will tell you that being naive doesn't mean you should be taken advantage of. That is true. That is correct. Mm -hmm. Now, as somebody who has worked on both sides of the divide, I would tell, like I said earlier. A businessman, an investor wants to make money. That is the sole purpose of investing. Sorry, that is the primary purpose of investing. For some, it's a passion project as well. It's a social impact project as well. They just fancy this person and they like this person, so they want to you know, invest in them. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, the primary reason why somebody will bring out millions of naira or dollars in different cases is to make sure that they make back at the very least that amount that they invested in you. Whether by by cash or whether in cash or in kind, that's the primary reason why people invest their money in products or people. Mm -hmm. 
now the artist just wants for most of for most artists who are upcoming especially those who you know who have this grass to grace story who are who have the grass story who start with the grass story, mm-hmm. they just want to get their music out there the joy of every creative every upcoming creative is to be seen and heard so at the point where they're seeking for investors at the point where they're seeking for record labels so people to invest in them they're not thinking about the moment. they just want to be heard they just want to have fun they just want people to feel their soul their music their art and that is very 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 dangerous that mindset is a slippery slope because if you fall in the hands of somebody who who will take advantage of, of your naivety you're going in the long run you're going to lose so it is very very <clears> recommended <throat> now I can say this from a place of privilege. Before I get, I get any job, before I sign any contract, I look at the fine print. Not everybody has that privilege. I look at the fine print because I can say no. I can walk away from every single contract and nothing will happen to me. Not everybody has that privilege. Mm-hmm. So when I say this, I also have it in mind that some people are desperate. They just want to get their, have their music out. So they will sign, and they don't even read. They will sign any contract. As far as it means that their records will be out which is very, very dangerous. So we should continue, those in the media space, those who have platforms should continue, and artists who have been there and experienced it, they should tell their stories. They should encourage the younger ones to, at every given time, read every contract, call in, there are entertainment lawyers all over the place, call them, call them up, <coughs> call them up, let them look at the fine print and ensure that there are clauses for you to work out if you need to. All right, Chidi, let's also look at um, entitlement mentality and the role that it has to play. We we complain a lot about how our generation is very entitled. Would you say that that is something that a lot of our artists, and I'm not making reference to Cynthia Morgan in this case, where looking at in general that a lot of the artists uh, can be entitled because we find that, you know, someone was giving me some information about what goes on behind the scenes when they are rebranding or branding an artist. That sometimes they bring an artist that has 500 followers, you know, brush the person up, get an already existing, because I hear that a lot of these record labels have, have social media accounts that they grow, and then they get one of these accounts that has maybe over 200,000 followers, give it to this artist, change the name of the social media account, rebrand the person, and then the person has one hit song, you know, for example, and then decides that they have blown now, so they owe the record label no allegiance. Would you say that some of our artists, not a lot, some of them also suffer a lot of these bad choices because of entitlement mentality? Not some of them, a lot of them, a whole lot of them. So, on the average, Nigerians are entitled people. It's because we're communal, you know. So we have, um, from we start from the family. We have people who, you know, we feel like because we're related somehow, we're entitled to their wealth, we're entitled to their resources, you know, stuff like that. Some of us, we got, we went to school on the backs of community. We went to school because some uncle or some auntie had, out there decided, you know what, this person is related to me, I'm going to pay their school fees. So a lot of us grow up with this mentality that we have to support the community as well. And because of that, we feel like people owe us or we owe people and all that. That's a very, 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 I mean, the mindset has advantages, but it's a dangerous mindset as well. Um, if as an artist, yeah, you've seen everything in a label has done for you, I think it is only fair that you try to pay back as much as possible. It is only fair to fulfill the details of your contract. Now, a lot of people have signed contracts that did not pay them at the end of the day. I'm not going to mention names, but one of the biggest stars in Africa said when he walked out of his record label, he walked out with just a name. He knew the importance of fulfilling his obligations because he knew that after working out, this guy was his starting point. So at the end of the day, if you believe in yourself, if you sign a bad contract, if you have signed a bad, if you're unfortunate enough to have signed a bad contract, yeah, she fill that contract, call a lawyer and ask for your options. See if there's a clause, see if there's a way to walk around it. If there's none, see, just take it out. You have signed yourself into slavery. Walk yourself out of it. And then tell your story. Don't tell your story from a place of these people are wicked and all that. No, don't do that. Tell your story from a place of I made mistakes, take responsibility for your actions. Because the moment you start, as an adult, the moment you sign the dotted line, my brother, my sister, <laughs> it is you that signs yourself into whatever it is. So shun that entitlement mentality. Nobody is, nobody should, nobody should care about your happiness. You're responsible for your own happiness. Nobody should care about your joy at the end of the day. You're responsible for it. So if you decide you want to walk out of that unhappy contract, you feel the obligations, buy it out. Plead with your whatever, the person you sign the contract with, whatever it is you can do. 
at the end of the day, it is the person's decision to let you walk away from that contract if you're not going to fulfill it. Okay, now that we've yes. tackled the artists, you know, some of the artists and the entitlement mentality, let's talk about the record labels. Mm -hmm. Now, the le record labels mm -hmm. have oftentimes been referred to as slave drivers, as the fact that a lot of them will draft contracts that will really not in any way, shape, or form benefit the artist. The artist will literally just be laboring to meet their needs. On the average, what are some of the things that record labels can do or desist from doing when going into agreements with artists? And I'm asking this because I, I, had, I once had the privilege of drafting a record label agreement. And in the record label agreement, the, 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 the agency, I was drafting it on behalf of the agency. And they told me, no, it has to be five years, that it has to be a five-year term. Now, there's been arguments back and forth. Some people say, ah, five years is too much now. How can you tell somebody to, sing with, to work with you for, for that long? You know, but the other argument would be that it, it takes time to actually build a star, that you don't just come out of nowhere and in under two years, you, mm -hmm. it's, it's not magic. So what's your take on the part of the record labels? Would you refer to record labels as uh, opportunities to extort unsuspecting artists? Or uh, what can they do differently? Or what should they stop doing? Or what can they do differently? OK, again, why, why, I mean, why are there record labels that you know, have been, have been um, slave, slave drivers? On the average, Record labels are very, very, like, they're very, 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 very critical to the ecosystem. These are guys who take, it's, it's like a gamble. These are guys who take a lot of risk. Every now and then you see a star that comes up and then the person fizzles out as fast as possible. Every now and then you see somebody who has potential and then something you don't hear, just don't hear about the person anymore. Every now and then you see, you know, press releases, people come to your show for interviews, you know, all those things. And then at some point, nobody's hearing about them anymore. All these things are done with investor money, record label money. So on the average, many of these record labels don't get their money back from some of the investments they make, which is why it is very, very important for them when they are signing any contract. They have a long-term plan to, to recoup their money, to get their money back, to get their investments back. So they are telling you they're going to be signed for 10 years, they're going to be signed for five years, we have 80% of your um, royalties from your discography. We have um, your master tape is us and all that and all that. I'm saying it because at the end of the day, like I said, they're not a charity. They are in need to make money. Now, from somebody who, who runs a business, I know you can run the business with heart. I know you can run the business with conscience. I know you don't have to take advantage of people. I try not to. It is difficult in the world that, that we're in. It is very, very, very difficult because the system, is, the system is rigged against you. So when you're making money, you want to make as much as it as possible because one day the system will, you know, turn back to take, take back as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But then, like I said, like as somebody who likes to do business with heart, don't take advantage of people's naivety. Don't. Try as much as possible to be kind, to be fair. Try as much as possible to be honest. Don't put those clauses in tiny print. Make them as big as possible. Let the person, they would always insist that the person gets their own lawyer. Let the person understand the implications of the contract before signing it. But at the end of the day, it is important that you make your money back. It's not a charity. Make your money back. Because when you make your money back, you're willing to invest in other people. I, I always say this, there are so many creatives who require investment. So make money so you can invest in other people. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's, there's really so much, but we, we have to wrap up shortly. Um, Nigerians have rallied around in support of Cynthia Morgan. Regardless of what happened, we want to see Cynthia back on our screens. We believe that she's really talented. I love her music. And I look forward to her coming back to the big screens. The GoFundMe has been set up. Uh, the target is $150,000. At the last time I checked, it was about $932 that has been raised. So we will keep our fingers crossed. Also, there's also an account, a bank account. You can check on Cassandra's page where pe people can contribute to Cynthia Morgan. Last question on my part, Chidi, is um, she's made allegations that her name has been, that her, her record label has taken over her name, her social media account. Jude has come out to refute that claim, so we cannot comment on that for now. Now, until we get the facts clear, what do you think should have been a better approach for her? Do you think she should have tweaked her original name a bit rather than going for a brand new name like Kiss Daniel did? He changed his name from Kiss Daniel with the SS to Z. Do you think that that's something she should have explored rather than trying to totally...
That's yes. the important thing. Um, she is talented. She is gifted. No doubt about that. She has um, she has a body of work that is quite impressive. Uh, she 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 her, her range is her range is incredible. Like she, she does she does raga. She does reggae. She does soul. I mean she does. She can do a lot of things. So that same that same energy, that same gift that I've seen her be able to, you know, um, create music across genres. I think she can also use it to think about the current time. What are people listening to? What can she drop that will be relevant in this time? I also do not want her to feel pressure to just drop music because people are waiting. Ah, people are waiting. Yes. If she drops nonsense. People are waiting. So I hope she's not pressured. Let her in the famous source of need to see. Don't pressure me to drop music. Let her not drop music until she's ready. And even when she's ready, let her pass it through a peer group or a social group. Let her sing from her heart. Let people understand that this may not be the hits that people are looking for, but this is from my heart. Someone had yeah, actually also, also tweeted, I think it's Akin Alabi, had tweeted that she shouldn't do music for now. Mm -hmm. She should write a book and go on seminars and speaking exactly. engagements. Do you think that that's a line exactly. she should tour as well? Yes. Yes, I mean, it might not be a book necessarily. I think she can just start communicating on her social media, talking about her journey, telling her story, you know, stuff like that. She can actually do write a book, act in one or two movies, feature in other people's music too. I think it is very, and I like the fact that Davido has, you know, come through and said he's ready, he's ready to work with her. So feature in other people's music, gradually come back into people's consciousness. Don't rush and go and drop the single. I mean, I might be wrong. She might drop a single and it will work, but I don't want her to feel pressured until she's ready to drop the music. Like I said, people love a sad story, people love, love a soft story, but people are quick to turn on you the moment you do something they don't like. Hmm. All right, so we believe that uh, this journey between, uh, this situation between her and uh, Judo Kwe will probably pass because, uh, like you said, the Nigerians like uh, a sad story, but they would definitely, now they have decided to rally around her she should not be uh, put into pressure to give us music if she's not ready to do that. Well, I believe uh, we've had a very good conversation regarding this. And um, I'll just last ask a final question from your side. Now, let's speak to the upcoming artists out there who are looking to blow, like they always say. Because many people will still jump into looking to blow. contracts. Yes, they're always jumping into contracts and coming out and saying the record label is this and that. So what advice would you give that record, uh, that artist that is young, talented and he wants to blow but you know what advice would you give them i i am i i am on my knees and i am begging <laughs> see first of all understand what you want understand if you just want to blow if you just want to be out there if you just want to i'm a creative and i know where this is coming from mm. i know that the opportunities i will get without pay i will sign it i'm not looking for money I am looking for that opportunity for the sake of that opportunity because I know what it's going to do for me long term. Mm -hmm. The important thing is think about what it is you want first. Seek advice from family and friends. Mm -hmm. if, a, if a label is looking for you, you are good to some extent. Yeah. You're already good to some extent if you're already being sorted out and uh, sought after by you know labels. So think about what you want. And then look at that contract and consult the please consult a lawyer. Mm. Co not consult a law. It is very not just not any lawyer. There are people who deal with entertainment. Yes. You know, it might be expensive. It might seem expensive to you, but on the long term, on the it's long good. run, it's important. It's it is very very important for you. So yes. think Thank about what you want first, and then really consult a lawyer and flourish. Yeah. Thank you so much, Chidi, for joining us and for your insight. We've been speaking with Chidi Okereke, digital entrepreneur. We looked at the relationship between record labels and artists using the Cynthia Morgan case study. And I hope that we all took that in good faith. And also, the, so far, we have, they have raised $922 out of the $150,000 goal. If you'd like to uh, donate to Cynthia Morgan, you can look online. The details are there. And also, there are a lot of scam pages. So please uh, ensure yeah, that you're definitely. careful and you do your due diligence. Because now, I checked almost 20 real Madrina fan Hustle. pages have come, do, come up because people are Hustle taking advantage of a very vulnerable Hustle situation, which is come. sad. It's very, very unfortunate. But we thank the fact that uh, we were able to bring this to the notice before anything um, happened. Because we were all wondering, where is Cynthia Morgan? Now we know and we are hoping.